In today's video, with the help of 3D animation, we'll see how FastTag works, the technology behind FastTag, and the high-level frauds associated with FastTag, and remedies to protect yourself. This video is sponsored by Master 3D with Professor. We'll talk about this best-rated 3D animation course later in this video. This video will also discuss why a 4-meter distance should be maintained between your vehicle and the vehicle in front of you while passing through a toll lane. The Indian government has published seven different types of fast tags. Violet is assigned to cars, jeeps, trucks, and vans. And orange is given to minibuses or two-axle light commercial vehicles. An axle is any part of a vehicle that helps connect and rotate the wheels. The green fast tag is for two-axle buses and trucks. The yellow fast tag is for three-axle buses and trucks. The pink fast tag is for four, five, and six-axle buses and trucks. The sky blue fast tag is for seven or more axle trucks. While the black fast tag is for heavy construction machinery, earth moving equipment, and JCBs. The fast tag issued under the National Electronic Toll Collection Program works based on RFID technology, radio frequency identification technology. This technology works on the electromagnetic spectrum with the help of radio waves. RFID technology has two main components. First is the RFID tag, also called fast tag. And second, the RFID scanner, which scans the fast tag. As soon as your car enters the fast tag lane, the RFID scanner scans the fast tag stuck on your car. Other than the things visible in the fast tag like bank name, customer care number, and logos, two other components are not visible with naked eyes. Those components are chip and antenna. The chip contains all the information required to ascertain the toll fare to be taken for that vehicle. It includes vehicle class, vehicle weight, fast tag ID, vehicle registration number, and wheelbase information. The wheelbase is the distance between the two axles. Likewise, if we stick the RFID tag on any human, it would tell all his details. And if we put it on animals, it would tell all their details. With the help of the antenna, the RFID scanner collects all the vehicle information quickly. Soon after collecting the information, the RFID scanner forwards all details to the toll plaza system. It may be the first time that you will see what the toll plaza system looks like, along with the toll owner, transaction number, CCTV recording, date and time, vehicle weight, temperature, and lane information, the detail shared by the RFID scanner is also stored here. The fast tag details are forwarded to the acquirer bank via the toll plaza system. Here, two terms are to be carefully understood. The first is the acquirer bank, and the second is the issuer bank. Let us understand with an example. After shopping, when I pay the bill for the goods purchased, the bank that has issued me a credit card for shopping is the issuer bank, and the bank working on the shop owner's behalf becomes the acquirer bank. Now the question is, how will the bank work on his behalf? Whenever I swipe my card, the acquirer bank checks if the card is authentic, has enough credit available, and is eligible for payment. The responsibility of checking all these will be of the acquirer bank that works on the merchant's behalf. Now here, you have to understand two important terms. First, while transacting on the toll plaza, the bank acting on behalf of the car owner will be the acquirer bank, and the bank acting on behalf of the toll plaza is called the acquirer bank. Thus, the fast tag details are transmitted to the acquirer bank from the toll plaza computer. When the acquirer bank receives the fast tag details, the details are forwarded to NETC Mapper for verification. NETC Mapper is a one-of-a-kind fast tag library containing information about all 10.3 million fast tags issued. Now the NETC Mapper informs the acquiring bank whether the fast tag is valid or not. The acquirer bank will notify the toll plaza system if the fast tag is invalid. And if the fast tag is valid, the acquirer bank will calculate the amount to be taken and send the debit request back to NETC Mapper. Next, the NETC Mapper will forward the debit request to the issuer bank. The issuer bank will deduct the toll fare from the fast tag holder's account 
and inform NETC Mapper. Finally, the NETC Mapper will notify the Acquirer Bank that the transaction was successful, and the Acquirer Bank will notify the Toll Plaza system. Once the transaction success message is received, the boom carrier will open, and you can cross the toll plaza. Now, let's talk about fast tag frauds. But before that, a gentle reminder. Finally, 1st July 2022 has been decided the finalized date by the company for the launch of our record-breaking Master 3D with Professor Premium Training Program. Master 3D with Professor is the best rated 3D animation training program that walks you through exactly how to create 3D animated videos in record time. There will be a 70% early birds discount for minimal seats. To grab that opportunity, make sure you visit brainrig.com and subscribe to my authentic newsletter. Additionally, the issuer bank will also send an SMS to the registered mobile number of the car owner, notifying him that the toll fare has been deducted from your FastTag account. Unfortunately, this SMS arrives approximately 10 minutes to one hour in most cases. FastTag is experiencing a significant fraud problem due to the late arrival of SMS. That is, by the time the SMS reaches you, you will have traveled from 12 kilometers to about 70 kilometers. I will explain that in the second part of this video, which is supposed to be published on my official Instagram account very soon.